Six Spider-Man movies is too many Spider-Man movies. By the time the last one rolled around, we'd watched Peter Parker cry and attend funerals his way across 10 hours plus of celluloid. Bless him. Also, despite packing in as many villains as possible, the series never managed to reach the heights of Spider-Man from 2004. That was, of course, until last year's Captain America Civil War, where, in an unprecedented intelligent move from Sony, they lent the character back to Marvel. This agreement meant that Marvel deals with the creative side, and Sony handles distribution and marketing, spoiling the movie in various trailers and clips. Also, they gave us this poster. You get it, it's kind of like a high school scrapbook aesthetic, mixed with something that makes you want to pull out your own eyes. Now, in theory, this is an advantageous agreement. Sony keeps any and all profits, and Marvel, who still own the license to all the merch, reap the benefits of having Spider-Man in the public eye. But has this agreement paid off? On the whole, absolutely it does. Spider-Man Homecoming is a lot of fun. And I don't just mean because he barely cries and attends minimal funerals. Homecoming does a really good job of portraying the everyday life of 15-year-old Peter Parker as he struggles to balance school with superheroing and a stable home life, as well as trying to impress Tony Stark enough so he can become a full-time member of the Avengers. A large bulk of the story is dedicated to Peter Parker attempting to solve the mystery of who are these criminals behind stealing all the tech from previous incidents in the MCU, including that from the Chitari invasion, and then repurposing it for sinister means. And because he's still very much a kid, with friends and classmates who look like actual children, and not 28 year olds wearing backpacks, he's really not that good at it. There's great little moments, like where he's evaluating how to approach criminals in certain situations, where he'll pause and you'll see him contemplate, do I rush in? Do I try and intimidate? Do I go for the joke? The point is, the film does a really good job of telling the origin of the character and watching us find his feet without the audience having to sit through Uncle Ben getting shot again. There's no real time jump either. It follows him day to day, and we get to observe Spider-Man as this super strong, highly skilled superhero who doesn't quite have a handle on his powers, let alone the Tony Stark built suit that he received in Civil War. What was also a pleasant surprise, despite me constantly banging on about it, is that not everything has been revealed in trailers and clips and articles, which to be fair, I'm not 100% on, as I stopped looking at them a while back. I mean, it would have been nice not to know the entire beat-for-beat -beat relationship with Tony Stark, because there's not really much more to that than what we've seen. That being said, if you were worried that Iron Man was going to take over this film, that really isn't the case. His role is bigger than that of a cameo, but this is clearly a Peter Parker story. The action is also great, and we get some things we haven't seen before, a lot of which come from his suit upgrade, including different web combinations. It does go well beyond Beyond just webbing up a guy. Though if you like seeing guys get webbed up, there still is that. And as far as villains go, there's quite a lot of them. Minor ones at least, but it never feels too much. Michael Keaton's Vulture also proves himself a formidable foe. Just this terrifyingly giant metal monster who could very well tear you in two if given half the chance. Look, if you weren't a fan of the last few films, this goes a long way to make up for them. It even manages to set up future story threads without having a basement filled with origins for various villains. Is it better than Spider-Man 2? Well, just coming out of it, it's hard to say. But it's certainly more fun, and I find Tom Holland's performance as Peter Parker brighter and more believable, a lot of which does have to do with his actual age. But there is a delight that he brings to the character that we haven't really seen before. This is a very enjoyable Spider-Man film and superhero film in general. I probably would have enjoyed it even more if I hadn't seen so many of these over the last 15 years. But yeah, like I said, they've done a really good job on this. So much so that maybe the Venom movie will turn out okay. I mean, Marvel aren't, aren't making that one. But at the very least, the Spider-Man Homecoming 2 sequel is something I'm looking forward to as opposed to dreading. And who doesn't want less dread in their life? Except if it's this guy. Look at that sour face. He probably, he probably is the law. But what did you think about Spider-Man Homecoming? And do you have a favorite version of the character? Could be a movie, a comic, a cartoon? Also, every Tuesday on this channel, we do something called Caravan of Garbage, where we play something either good or terrible from the past. Last time, it was Maximum Carnage. Here's a clip. Carnage is here. He's literally a serial killer. Yep. Is he a good guy now, though, or something? Surely not, because of the serial killing. Yeah, I think he might be. I don't think he'd get a pass afterwards if you're like, you know Venom what? Venom got a pass. He killed a lot of dudes. Yeah, true. Tobey Maguire got a pass for pushing that guy out the window. That's true. The original Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, you're injured in the alley. Ribs killing me. You'll be right, mate. And of course, every Monday, you can join me on my podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk the biggest movie, TV, and comic book news of the week. That's linked below along with everything else. But thanks for watching this. I appreciate it. Take care.